This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1653. Should You Work Out Twice a Day? By Flora Beverly of foodfitnessflora.blog. And I'm Dr. Neil, your host and narrator. Hey there, happy Saturday. I hope your weekend is off to a great start. Have you watched The Batman yet? Anyways, welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, or OHD, where I act as your narrator of popular health and fitness blogs and provide my commentary at the end. Now, before we get to it, Pendulum Therapeutics is the first and only biotech company to isolate an important beneficial bacterial strain and put that strain into a convenient, new, probiotic-rich capsule to help manage type 2 diabetes and nurture your body's microbiome. It can feel like an uphill battle to keep post-meal blood sugar and A1C levels where you need them. Pendulum glucose control can help. If you or someone you love has type 2 diabetes, take control of glucose levels with Pendulum Glucose Control. Use code OHD at PendulumLife.com to get 20% off all products. And with that, I'll refrain from discussing the Batman film and get right to today's post so we can start optimizing your life. Should You Work Out Twice a Day? By Flora Beverly of foodfitnessflora.blog. A recent UK announcement clarified that folks would be allowed to work out an unlimited amount outdoors as part of the gradual easing process of lockdown. Whether you agree with this or not, it's led to a spike in articles preaching the benefits of working out twice a day. For the vast majority of the population, however, working out two times a week would be more than their usual. Is promoting double days sensible? And is it a tactic that could work for many? Here are some of the pros and cons of working out twice a day. Pros. 1. Double workouts can allow you to fit in more accessory workouts, strengthen conditioning and physio sessions, reducing imbalances and weaknesses. Some people feel they don't have time for these if they're aiming to train five days a week and fit in sufficient rest days. Doubling up means you can do an intense session in the morning and a low-intensity stretching or physio session in the afternoon. 2. Doubling up but doing the same number of workouts per week can mean that you allow yourself more rest days. Rather than working out five hours a week over five days, you can do two double days and a single day in just three days, thereby allowing yourself four rest days a week. You'll need them after all. Three, splitting a session in two and doing half in the morning and half in the afternoon means you're able to do each part of the session with more intensity as you're better rested for the second half. Four, splitting a session in two can also allow you to fit it in on a busy day. 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes after work in the afternoon is sometimes easier than an hour all at once. And five, working out twice a day reduces your sedentary time. We know that sitting for long periods of the day can be incredibly detrimental to our health. So even fitting in a short workout in the morning and evening can mean moving more overall. Cons. 1. Even splitting the same workout in two can lead to injury or overtraining, as you're working already fatigued muscles. If you're not used to training a lot, working out twice a day will take its toll. 2. Overtraining compromises your immunity, leaving you more vulnerable to even small illnesses. 72 hours after a long run, your immunity is reduced. For obvious reasons, this is especially problematic now. Doubling up, leads to a greater likelihood of overtraining if not done correctly. Three, workouts lead to micro tears in our muscles. Doubling up workouts can mean that these tears are not given sufficient time to repair, potentially leading to injury. Four, running has such a high injury rate that all runners are advised to increase mileage and intensity slowly. Doubling up can mean that it's possible to do more mileage quicker, leading to common injuries such as shin splints, iliotibial band syndrome, or ITBS, plantar fasciitis, and tendonitis. Five, it can be hard enough to convince yourself to get out once a day. By trying to force yourself to head out twice a day, you can take all the fun out of exercise. And six, doubling up is unsustainable for many. Overdo it, and you may need to take off significant amounts of time, reducing any benefits you get from your double days. In my opinion, there are more downsides to working out twice a day than there are positives. For the vast majority of people, 
I have been receiving a record number of messages about people picking up injuries from suddenly increasing the amount they were running or starting new training programs without a strong baseline of fitness. Of course, there will be people who thrive off doubling up workout sessions, especially those who do so with the help of a coach or who are already experienced in their sport. With proper planning, double days can allow for longer periods of rest between workouts, aiding recovery. They may also help people fit in enough strength and conditioning sessions that they could not otherwise, while also fitting in rest days. The best way to be able to gain all the benefits of working out, even getting fitter during lockdown, is to work on one thing at one time. If you take it up running, don't increase intensity and distance in the same week. Your mileage should increase by no more than 10% week after week to avoid injury. But if you do your longest run one week, Don't also start adding in sprints or interval sessions in the same week or even the week after. Most of the sessions we do should be at a moderate intensity. We do not always need to be pushing the boundaries of our abilities. Be kind to yourself. This is a tough time for us all and putting your body under extra physical pressure may cause you to reach a breaking point. Perhaps you want to start taking advantage of double days because you're lacking time or want more rest days. That's absolutely fine. Maybe just try one double day a week, thereby taking one extra rest day too, and see how you get on. Take it easy, and remember that recovery and food is as important as the session itself. To recap, one, while exercise can improve mood, fitness, and your immune response, too much exercise can have exactly the opposite effect. Two, if you are not a professional athlete or highly experienced with a well-thought-out training plan, Double days are probably going to increase your risk of fatigue, injury, and may dampen your immune system. Three, provided you are not doing more workouts per week, double days can be effective when linking together a strength and conditioning session and a short run. Four, as always, stick to the 10% rule. If you're a runner, increase your weekly mileage by no more than 10% per week. Any more than this increases your risk of injury even or especially when taking on double days. Five, overtraining often takes several weeks to take its toll, so watch out for signs of it. And six, listen to your body. If your workout doesn't perk you up and you feel constantly fatigued, take an extra rest day. Yes, we have a lot of time at the moment and exercising can feel like a welcome break, but the consequences of overdoing it can be serious and long-lasting. Be sensible. You just listened to the post titled, Should You Work Out Twice a Day? by Flora Beverly of foodfitnessflora.blog. Now, if you haven't heard, Mel Robbins, a best-selling global phenomenon and one of the leading voices in personal development, is back with a new Audible original podcast, Here's Exactly What to Do, which invites you to reimagine the life you want and gives you the tools to take action. Each of the 14 episodes focuses on an attitude or situation that's holding you back. Is your confidence in need of a recharge? Is your creativity running low? Are you not carving out the right life balance? Or are you just feeling blah and can't get out of bed? In her typical, no BS style, Mel cuts through the hype to deliver the simple tools you need to move forward and create positive change. These short, impactful episodes are the perfect way to take a break, take a breath, and feel truly empowered. Here's exactly what to do is the perfect follow-up to start here, her 13-topic breakdown of how to deal with whatever life is throwing at you. Available only on Audible. audible.com slash what to do. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Do you remember that plantar fasciitis story I told you about? Last year, I experienced one of the worst cases of plantar fasciitis I have ever had. I woke up one morning and basically couldn't walk. The pain was nearly unbearable. When I went to see my podiatrist, a foot specialist, they asked me about the types of things I had been doing lately. She asked, have you changed your workouts recently? Well, yeah, I recently wanted to improve my running abilities, so I did a three-mile run and added in 10 minutes of skipping rope after. She then asked if I had spent any time on uneven ground, like walking at the beach. I said, yes, the day after I did this three-mile run and skipping rope routine, I went to the beach. She then said, well, there you have it. The combination of all of those things probably did it. So good job, little buddy. 
I basically overtrained, then made things worse by making my feet work even harder after that overtraining. This is a perfect recipe for plantar fasciitis. So take it from me and today's author, Flora, and take things slowly. Gradual progression is key. What ended up happening with my plantar fasciitis, I was down for the count for two weeks, meaning I couldn't do anything on my feet, which psychologically was much worse than if I had just taken the intensity back a few notches so that I didn't end up with plantar fasciitis in the first place. All right, that'll do it for me for today. I hope you're having a great weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Sunday show where your optimal life awaits.